Hello and welcome to the News Cube. I'm J. Douglas Barker. Well, what can we say? After the presentations of Iran and Venezuela at the Kofi Club, we thought we'd have plenty to talk about for a while. What could possibly upstate Chavez complaining about the sulfur smell left behind by President Bush at the United Nations podium? And there's more to this story than just Bill Clinton's hairball on Fox News. Everyone is playing the blame game again now because it's easier than actually addressing the real problem. The source of our present crisis goes way back, and we can get a better picture of what's happening now by looking at the footprints of this guy. There's plenty of blame to go around. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. The Shah of Iran, what a guy. Whatever his intentions, he's someone who's not being judged well by history. His story is long and complex, but in a nutshell, it amounts to this. The Shah took over Iran when his father was pushed out in 1941, and in the years after that, he did not fare all that well. Again, the story is complex, and this is just a brief review, but basically, this guy needed help staying in power because he was not able to weed out governmental corruption and because his people were not all that happy with his leadership. One person in particular who was not happy was this guy, a leading fundamentalist cleric. The Shah was being influenced to make his country become more like the West. This guy, the Ayatollah Khomeini, wanted to take the country somewhere else. The Shah and the Ayatollah didn't even try to work out their differences, and the Shah set up a brutal secret police the Savak, to stamp out any activities not approved by the Shah's ruling council. The stage was set for a showdown, and here's the guy who broke it open. President Carter went to Iran at the height of the unrest and told the Iranian people what a great guy their leader was. Uh, not a good idea. And we know what happened next. So we can blame the goober president for all the problems we have today? Oh, look, look, there's a president's Ford. Uh, he was there with the Shah before Carter. Uh, can we blame him? Oh, 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 there's President Nixon. Everyone blames something on him. Is it his fault? Well, President Johnson. We all know that he was seen by some as being a crooked, old coat hanger kind of guy. Maybe we can blame it all on him. Uh, President Eisenhower? But I thought everybody liked Ike. Okay, how many people know that the Ike we all loved actually supported a coup in Iran to bring the ousted Shah back to power. That's right. The Shah was ousted. The new leader nationalized the oil production, and that really hurt the British economy. President Truman, who had dealt with the Shah, blocked the coup that Eisenhower later encouraged. Before Eisenhower, there was President Roosevelt. President Roosevelt, does it all go back to him? Well, let's look into this a little further. The Allies of World War II were worried that the Iranians might make an oil deal with the Nazis. So the Brits and the Russians invaded Iran in 1941, pushed out the Shah's assumed Axis-leaning father, and installed with the Shah a government that was amenable to Western thinking. After World War II, the West was concerned about the aspirations of the Soviets and wanted to make sure that all the cheap oil went West instead. The Russians had helped the Shah come to power, but they were outbribed by the West. And there you have it. 
Generations of people living under a corrupt government that did not have the good of the locals at heart. This mess goes a long ways back. And you're right, it's all about oil. The buzz about former President William Jefferson Clinton will go on for a while. Of that, you can be sure. Politicians will continue to blame each other. Arabs will continue to blame the Jews and the West. Meanwhile, people in the Middle East will continue to die horrible deaths in numbers that are shocking by any account. The United Nations will continue to talk, and anyone who tries to do something meaningful in their dialogue will be vilified. I wish I had an answer. If you think you do, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us, newscube at pottedmeat.com. Dialogue is important, and we want to hear from you. For now, from the News Cube, I'm J. Douglas Barker.